Hey folks, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to create some kind of step recorder inside of the node grid of Bitwig Studio. And um, I try to keep it as simple and easy as possible for everyone to follow along. But first we have to answer the question, what actually is step recording? And I think the best way to show it to you is on my Arturia key step here. Um, uh, it's not it's not German enough. Um, so here we have a step integrated step sequencer um, that we can use, but not everyone has a key step pro, right? So that's why we want to recreate it in the Bitwig grid. Um, but here there's a step sequencer on there and you can see at the moment the transport is stopped and we can hit record. And the first step is flashing. So it it's ready to take some notes, right? So we can play some notes here. And on every key press, we advance inside of the sequence step by step. Until we hit the end of the sequence, of course. And then we can overwrite the whole sequence again if we want to, or we can just let it play. sometimes really nice to create some sequences on the like this on the fly you can also change the playback speed of course um, so a bit slower so that's step recording so um, it's very nice if you just want to create some melodies on the fly. I use this all the time here with the Pulley D. There's also an integrated step sequencer or step recording sequencer. Very, very nice. Um, so, but some people don't have it, right? They don't have a step sequencer at hand. And we can use here the node grid for that. So inside of the node grid, we can utilize as a buffer, we can utilize, uh, what's the name? Array. So here we want to store all the pitch informations for each step. And to access each step, we use a counter. So here with the counter, we can decide how many steps we want to have. At the moment, it's eight. We can also use here 16. I just use eight for this experiment. So we can use this to change the position in our sequence. And we go here to the right face. So this is the position where we want to write a pitch information. So at the moment, it's at the beginning here, it's zero. So then we need the pitch information that's coming here from the MIDI keyboard, of course. And then we need here um, a gate input to actually save. So take this value here and save it at this position. That's a right um, operation. You can call it like this, a right operation. Um, and then we want to also advance here the counter every time we hit the gate or we hit a note on the keyboard. Um, so we can already write some informations here into the array. So we already recorded the sequence. To play this back, all we need to do is to use a second counter here. Maybe call this playback. Um, and go into the read phase. And then use a pulse or a triggers module here. We want to play this back here with eight note speed. And then this one here goes through the array and recalls all the pitch informations we just stored. So um, this gets also different color here for some reason. And then we go out to the pitch output here and then we can use this as a trigger. So it plays back exactly what we just played on the keyboard. That's basically all you need to create step recordings on the fly. In my opinion, this is completely fine, just enough. It's, you don't need anything more because you can also, on top of this, record something new. So we play now something different on the keyboard. I can show you this here.
in my opinion, this is all I need, right? But it's a bit basic if you want to, you know, give this someone else as a patch. Um, it's probably not that easy, but in my opinion, it's completely fine for me. That's all I need. Um, so we can implement a bit of playback and uh, recording logic. Um, there's also velocity here. So yeah, that's something I show you later on here with the velocity. We can also record velocity, of course, here for each step. Mm. So let's first implement here a, a playback button. So I use a toggle. Um, this one. So we can stop the playback. Playback. Nice. Um, so the playback logic is very easy here. Just hit this to play and hit this to stop. So we can use this here maybe also as a remote playback. Nice. So the recording logic is a bit more complicated. So we use a button here. Maybe move this a bit out of the way here. We use a button and call this uh, record. And then we use a latch. And the latch just changes the value between zero and one, and we can decide when we want to do it. So when we hit record, of course, we want to switch to one. So recording question mark. Is it true? Is it true that we are recording? If we get a one, then yes. If we get a zero, then mm, no, not so much. Um, so we use a select then. And the select then decides uh, what to do when it gets a one. So when we hit record here, we have here a one. So this switches then to the second input. So every time when we record, we want to have a gate to advance the counter here of the recording process. And every time we don't record or when the record is stopped, then we don't want to advance this. So when do we want to stop the recording? Of course, every time when the sequence is finished. So when the, or when we finish to record a sequence. So we can do this here with a bit of logic very easily. Uh, this one. So when this signal here goes back to zero, when we are back at the beginning of the sequence, then send out here a gate signal to switch this back to zero. But you can see here it's not working because we are kind of create some mm, feedback loop. So inside of the grid, we need to use here a long delay uh, to introduce a bit of delay or delay buffer for the feedback. Um, it's not 0 0.02 milliseconds here. Uh, don't be fooled. Um, it's actually the minimum is the sample rate of your audio setup here. For me, it's um, 10 milliseconds, right? So this is now here a 10 milliseconds delay. Go back in here. It's also yellow. And um, yeah, so when the sequence is finished, uh, we switch off the recording. So recording on, record, back to zero, right? We switch it off because we just finished recording here. Um, yeah, the sequence, that's all you need. Recording on, record all the steps until we hit eight, back to playback, right? So now we want to have also something different here. Um, at the moment, we get pitch information here from the array and we get the trigger uh, here from this triggers module. So when we record, we want to actually hear what we play on the keyboard. We don't want to hear what's coming from the array and what's coming from this triggers module. We want to hear what we play. So we have to switch this here on and off um, when we record. So we use here another select um, maybe call this here advance inside of the sequence. Uh, maybe use uh, this here. So this is uh, gates. Um, so every time we record, we have here one. So this switches down to this input. 
So every time we record, we want to hear the original gate informations. And we also want to hear the original pitch informations. Um, yeah, let's call this pitches here. Yeah. And when we don't record, we have this input check here. So we want to hear the pitch coming from the array and we want to hear the triggers coming from the playback. That's the idea. Okay, so we have a bit of recording and playback logic here now. So you can see the playback logic and the recording logic is more complicated than um, the step recorder itself. But that's always the case with applications or when you are a de developer, right? The user interface is always the most complicated thing in the whole application. And the logic to make actually the function or the, the business, business logic or how you want to call it, is not that big because that's where um, the computer hits reality or the patch hits reality, right? The inter interface, the, um, the connection with the user. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so recording is in there. We can use this here so we can hit record and hit playback. Maybe call this recording. Recording. And we can also influence here the playback speed with the, with the steps or with the triggers module here. Triggers uh, for each bar. So eight triggers at the moment here. Um, and this should work. Let me, let me try this out here for a moment. Uh, recording. And then we play the notes. We can hear what we play on the keyboard. And then it stops recording, so we can't hear what we play on the keyboard anymore. So it's just stopping, which is very nice. We can um, just leave this on. You can leave a recording on if you want to, and then hit playback. So let's duplicate this here also for um, for velocity, velocity, and this is pitch, pitches. So we go in here uh, with the velocity information. We give this a different color. Uh, we also need here this one for uh, the. Give this also a different color. So we use here this then, and here we use that, okay? And you can put this on a different place. I don't know what's better, yeah. Something like this. Okay, let's try this out again. Um, recording, so we start with zero here. Right, so I use there a bit more velocity, so you can see that we are recording this. Bam, step recording. So then when we have this, we of course can uh, just duplicate this here to another track and choose to maybe another polymer. Stop playback and use maybe four triggers only. Just record this here, octave lower. Oh, we have to... opinion of my first iteration without all the logic was much much better it was more fluent in my opinion <laughs> but you can see uh, you can easily here create stuff like this and if you do live streams or live events and you just want to record some sequences on the fly 
um, this is super neat because you just need to hit record or like you saw in my first iteration, you don't even hit, need to hit record. You just play something different on the keyboard. Maybe your arm here to track and record something new and then you have your new sequence without using the clip launcher, without recording into a, a note clip or anything like that. It's super neat in my opinion. And I saved this here as a preset and put you put this in the description below so you can download it if you want to. Um, you can put uh, you can advance this in all kinds of directions, right? You can increase here the step size. So you can say we want to have uh, 16 steps. Uh, 16 notes to record or even more you can all go up to 64 here um, so you can make the sequence longer you can change the playback here with the triggers right you can make it slower um, you can make it faster so 16 notes here you can use odd numbers and then put this into um, what's the name a clock quantizer here something like this and then uh, synchronize this to 16 notes then you have more like a more rhythmical. Maybe you like this. Uh, we can also create you another instrument track and I show this all the time because people are, keep asking me this every time I, sh I make something here with the note grid. They want to know how to um, record this so we can just record it a note grid into another um, yeah, instrument so this is coming up from the, from the note grid of course so you can save it then in a yeah note clip if you want to um, you can also bound or bind the playback here to the playback of the or the transport of the um, sequencer so we can say uh, uh, what's the name? Playback, transport playing, right? Something like this. Um, so maybe use your modulator out for this and then activate playback. So every time we hit play on the transport, we activate here the playback and play it back. Um, the sequence here uh, starts where you stopped the playback. So you can also say every time I hit the transport here I reset playback and start from the beginning of the sequence or you can use a transport and bind it to the position of the transport so every two bars we get here a trigger signal and we reset every two bars the playback So that's also possible. So all kinds of different uh, tweaks you can do to this patch. Um, but still, I still like my first iteration, the, the very simple one, the most, because it's so fluent to work with. Um, maybe call this here um, step uh, recorder or something like this. Save preset, step recorder. Um, that's note rhythmic probably. Yeah. Um, records step stepped note input or something like this. Um, so yeah, so I put this in the description below so you can use it if you want to. I hope you learned something about the note grid. Keep asking questions, like the video, subscribe to the channel, whatever you want to do. Um, thanks for watching. See you in the next video and bye.